Welcome to the Out the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm I, oh, Just before you begin. Uh... <laughs> You're good. <laughs> Are you what? What was the question? <laughs> oh, because I, I, I'm getting a lot of cutting out from you guys. I don't know if that's me cutting out or if that's you cutting out, but yeah. I'm going to try again. <laughs> Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Manuel. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. It's only our third try to start the show, so this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and we did it. Third time's a charm. Uh, this is our show about anything and everything off-road. We can go to any topic. And to be honest, we go all over the place. We don't really do. stay on off-road topics. Um, as always, we're socially distanced. We did it way before it was mandated. I'm in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast. And man, oh man, God, I can't say it. Why can't I say your name? Manual. The hang of it. Manual. There we go. Manuals yeah. in California. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Southern California. Yes. Oh, and his it's address is right, right below, yeah. <laughs> right below LAX. You can see my house when you line in. Look out the the south window. I'll remember that. Uh, <laughs> thank you for coming on the show tonight. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me, guys. It's an honor. Uh, we normally start with the news. It's Ross has it as it's been a slow week for news. I don't think it's been a slow week for news. I think this well, is one of the more giant releases that have ever happened. In terms of volume, it was a slow week. Well, there's but been no in, news forever. Yeah, in terms of how much the off-road community gives a shit about this piece of news i mean new land cruiser pictures are uh, pictures in air quotes um mm -hmm. lc 300 has been spied it's not really so, revealed it's it, they're total spy photos from what looks like a test facility out in japan probably fresh off the line waiting for some kind of testing uh chris has beautifully brought it into our video here <laughs> so for the listeners uh, it's got basically an, the whole front end is a grill <laughs> with the exception of very, very, very small percentage of, uh, of bumper lining the sides. It kind of has the profile more so of the current GX than the, you know, the, the Lexus Prado, the forerunner with the V8. So like the silhouette is, is a little slimmer, um, but the rest of it kind of just looks like they took the LX that's on sale right now and extrapolated it to be more modern. Uh, you, you know, it's got the previous generation Ford Expedition vibes because that that is what first struck me. The way that the Ooh. grill elevates between the headlights, it has that kind of snoutiness that the old Expedition had. Somebody, and then, somebody yep. from Hooniverse made the same comment in the Slack channel. They were like, they need to talk to Ford about their old, like their old style Gillette razor blade grills. Seriously, that it's, you know, instead of a three bar grill, like what, as was all the rage with Ford back in the 2000s, this is like the four bar version of that <laughs> they, grill. And they that, added a blade. Yeah, yeah, no, that is, yeah, the, yeah. the then in horizontal bars, 100%. Yeah, in profile, I get Nissan Patrol or uh, Nissan Armada market the way the the um the dlo up sweeps toward the end after the mm -hmm. uh yeah you know up to the c pillar um but then in the back it has the toyota signature kind of shaping of the the tail lights and that that looks proper toyota but yeah i would say it's derivative overall i'm i'm trying to find i'm gonna look for one more image there was a shot from the side before and you could actually see they've changed um the lugs on it um because the 200 it, series is only five lug but this so it's is six back to six yeah interesting so the real question here is the powertrain because there's been rumors of a three and a half liter twin turbo v6 with hybrid assist or just you know a full hybrid motor to go with it um so there's also rumors of just sticking with the v8 i don't think there's been any indication from the pictures that came out as to what the powertrain is yeah. but i mean if they're going up to six lugs there's probably a possibility it's carrying more weight which in turn could mean batteries in 
in some capacity, you know, whether it's a full hybrid or just like a, um, you know, what Jeep does FCA with the, is it, it's not ES, no, E-Assist was the old GM one. It's, um, oh shit, what does Jeep call it? E-Torque. E-Torque, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I don't know. Overall, it, it, it scares people seeing a new Land Cruiser anytime there's a new Land Cruiser. And, you know, Chris is the one to attest to this having owned one. But when a, a model of this lineage and this significance comes to a new generation, there's going to be backlash regardless. Um, the thing is, though, in this case, until we see what it can do and see what they've actually done with it, I don't think based on the design that it's actually out of place. <laughs> it's not a pretty vehicle from those shots. I'm video. Oh, right. I mean, uh, and of course, it's prudent to reserve judgment until you see it in person. 100%. The, uh, yeah. And so the angle that I'm getting from Chris right now, when you're looking at it from an elevated angle, it looks like a more cohesive design. So yeah, I would reserve judgment, uh, judgment myself. Touche. It's, it's funny. Well, and Land Cruisers are like polarizing, like because the 80 series, oh, I stopped my screen share first. Uh, the 80 series is like that, that for a lot of people, that's like the pinnacle of Land Cruiser design. They like the curvy. That's the high water marks. Yep. Like that's the high one. Like the 100 series came with a V8. The 200 series was just the new one. And that's like soccer moms only. But now like some of those early ones are getting old enough that guys are starting to get a hold of them fairly cheap. And then they can start to build them out. Like, yeah, they're $55,000 instead of 85. <laughs> They're, they're yeah. actually a lot cheaper yeah. oh well, still 35 40 <laughs> they're not that low yet <laughs> right they're not that low yet but like they're starting to be reasonable um because you got to think like an early 200 series is like 2006 mm -hmm. is that right yep i should be i'm like we're toyota fans we should know this. Oh six or oh seven <laughs> i mean it was like right around the same time that the xterra changed and the frontier changed and a lot of things happen right around that in the off-road world and really haven't changed since. Yeah. Anyway, I, where I, are we even going to get it? Like, the, like, I don't know that we're going to get Probably the 300 not. series. Yeah. Like for I us, I highly doubt it. I mean, we're going to have they, to import them. They made, they made a big last year about canceling the vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, and, or, you know, they, they didn't say it was going away forever or anything, but you got the sense that with that final edition that they had, they were giving out to all the press uh, last year. It just seemed like it was a farewell more than likely permanently. Right. Um, their, you know, Toyota's portfolio right now is very bullish on electric or electrified or hydrogen. In the case of people in Southern California, you can take advantage of the infrastructure here in that $15,000 worth of free hydrogen fuel. Um, so and that's why like, on my run this morning, I saw two Mirais. That's two more <laughs> than I've ever seen. Right, right. And so the fact that I saw two of them in the course of running for 30 minutes, um, that's, right. that's astounding. Um, but yeah, and so that's, and, and for that reason, for this, you know, for the, the green movement that Toyota is doing in the United States, at least, I, I just don't see the 300 series being, um, you know, being put into the pipeline anytime soon, if, if at all, really. Yeah. yeah. And that aligns, I mean, there's been rumors of an electric or some kind of electrified Tacoma for a few years now that's been in the swirlings, you know, they've talked about a diesel tundra forever, but I, th I think that ship has long since sailed, but this all, I mean, it brings into question the fate of the forerunner too, because, you know, this forerunner has been on sale since 2010, which mm -hmm. it's had a few revisions, but it's, it's, we're ready for a new one. So Is does the, the reason the yeah. forerunner is still here because of what? like windows probably because they're they're preparing a new forerunner is the indication there's also some speculation that the forerunner is going to get a little bit bigger possibly to take the place of the two you know it's going to grow just a little bit and kind of do what both of them do it's not going to step on sequoia's toes you know in length or, or family hauling purpose but don't know we'll see I just, I need them to yeah. build an, a Sequoia XL and I would literally order one. Because you're enjoying Chevy ownership so much. We'll get to that in a second. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, I want to hear about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's, we can talk about the other Toyota product right now. We can jump right to it, Russ. Sure. Uh, so it's not a Sequoia XL, even though it would be almost the same kind of. No. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a half hearted attempt to gain even more of the outdoorsy quote I'm doing air quotes outdoorsy lifestyle demographic that's you know that's buying new cars because it's so hard to buy anything else these days um, with used prices being what they are but Toyota brought the it's the Sienna wilderness but I or no no it's not it's the woodland Wood, wilderness, wilderness is the Subaru the outback yeah I knew, I knew I was gonna do that I was looking at it when I said that, but yeah, it, it's called Sienna Woodland. Um, I mean, the long and the short of it is it's effectively a minimal, minimal lift on a Sienna. So it looks, it looks like you would expect. You don't have to do any crazy imagining here. It's not like that psychotic Sienna they built for SEMA or the auto show circuit a few years ago. That was like, you know, yeah, thanks, Chris. It's, side it's... by side. So here's what it looks like to me. You know how when they ship certain European cars over the the high seas and they put those spring spacers in the vehicles? Yeah, the, the pucks. Yeah. yeah, pucks, okay, yeah, yeah. So it looks like it still has his pucks on. And But even, yeah, it just, it, it looks like it just came off the boat. Mm-hmm. And even though it's built in America, and still, it looks like it came <laughs> off a major shipping boat. And uh, they're doing the uh, postdoc prep for it to go to dealers and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Why does my I, GTI ride so badly? Oh, just, because <laughs> they forgot to take the pucks out of the port. Right. So, um, yeah, where's the beef, guys? I mean, geez, all-wheel drive, six-tenths of an inch of a lift. <laughs> 6.9 inches of ground clearance. I, I think that's the same as like a Honda HRV, which is one of the lowest, if not the lowest crossover uh, among the sub in, in the subcompact space. And I, I took that for some light off-roading that HRV and I high centered twice and I didn't, I didn't mean to. It was a <laughs> and that's a short <laughs> wheelbase too. That's a pretty yeah. short wheelbase. Yeah, and you would think, you know, there's a little bit of break over here, but there's a bunch of stuff hanging under beneath, like these weird rails. That, I don't know what's going on down there, but it's a mess. It's a hodgepodge mm-hmm. of stuff going on down there, and it loves to scrape in high center. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna ruin this thing. And I had to, I was, I was, I was scared because I got off the little hill that I was on. It was a great photo opportunity too. It had all like the Santa Clarita Valley in the background and everything. And I, um, I'm like, oh man, hopefully like nothing's bent or scraped or anything. Cause it was making some bad noises, but luckily it was fine. And then that's the great thing about off-roading. Like the, the, the sounds, you know, when you're scraping it, like it sounds a lot worse than it actually It sounds is. like the end of the world is happening it really and, is you, and it's awful. usually nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, and so, yeah, luckily the, the HRV pulled through, but I could have been in any, I mean, I would, could have been in any other competitive crossover and it wouldn't have had that. None of that would have happened. Right. Right. So, yeah, I mean, this is. I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm not speechless, but I don't think there's really much to say. <laughs> you know, like it's it's a lift. It's the crossbars are I mean, included. You get a power either. outlet. I don't know. I don't know. It, I mean, yeah, it, 1500 watt power outlet. Whoop de do. I mean, exactly. really, you guys could have made it. They didn't even fake it. No, with I mean, some they could like... have made it more. They could have made it more enticing to the operators by putting knobbies on it. I mean, the only when I when I tested the Sprinter van back in like 2016, that thing had BF Goodrich KO2s on it. Remember, that was a tire that BF Goodrich Rich dropped from 10,000 feet and it stayed on the bead. All right, exactly. Yeah. So that yeah. was a picture on that Sprinter that I had. I took it to Rower Flats. I offered that thing. I had an amazing time. I'm like, wow, this feels like a UN peacekeeping mission, and <laughs> I'm like. I'm like the coolest person on these trails right now because everybody's driving. Is it an all white van? Common stuff. I'm in this big red Clifford van with KO2s and four wheel (laughs) drive and a diesel. I'm just, I I felt like I was the rule of the roost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, this, I mean, first of all, Toyota doesn't put knobbies on things. Even the TRD pros come with like a half hearted, you know, bullshit highway tire. All right. Um, But that's saying what it should have looked like. (laughs) Excuse me. But 
I know which picture this is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's, remember their concept that was like off the wall bonker Sienna. That's what I was talking concept. about. Yeah, yeah that's, the black one, this the Tonka is just, one or whatever. This is just a normal van with knobbies. And it, yes, that makes sense. They didn't even, like, they could have tried a, a Wild Peak or what's another one that's like not as aggressive? Hancock. Um, the, uh, yeah, like a, or yeah. a Yokohama Geolander. Like, yeah. there were so Anything. many options of tires they could have tried. Yeah. And they were just like, nope, leave the Michelins on it. It's fine. Toyota knows how to make an off road vehicle. <laughs> this is it's a marketing I mean, exercise. It's a marketing. Yeah. It, it, that's it. Moving yeah. on. It, not the, dunking on it too much tonight the well, the only thing that i'm expecting to see more and more is like them taking reservations like i feel like the tesla model is now becoming the model for so they'll put out some bullshit marketing exercise and they'll be like who wants one they'll you write them a 1500 dollars check or whatever it is and they're just like okay cool we've got some money now and whether or not it's ever real or not i don't think anyone cares <laughs> Cybertruck's not real <laughs> still like it's how many years has it been um uh, that and is a good question the pandemic has ruined it has uh, been it's been two years now has it been two years oh that's it yeah because it came out when i was still working for roadshow by cnet <laughs> 2019 is when it came out yeah and i remember yeah i remember we were all the entire editorial staff were spread across the country and we were all on Slack, like live <laughs> typing to each other, like, oh my God, this is going to be really, really interesting. At least it's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. And it didn't disappoint, but oh, it was one of the most entertaining the right. things yeah. ever. Yeah. But I remember that was like some, I want to say it was like April of, um, of 19 or something it, like that. It yeah. felt like watching, uh, you know, when you go on YouTube and you just watch like cut after cut of fail videos. Mm-hmm. That's what it felt like. It like when he threw the ball and it broke the window, you're like, that, that really just happened. Like, it's like watching a fail video. Like just, yeah. oh, what a my, spectacle. My favorite are people still think they're going to, it's going to come and it's still going to look exactly how they Well, did. they were just driving it around in their Texas facility, the Giga factory or whatever down in Texas. Again, you know, like marketing without spending money on marketing. Yeah. Yep. Pas passenger safety standard, or not passenger, pedestrian safety standards will not let that truck look like that. <laughs> There's no way. I'm never going to nom, nom, nom. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to get decapitated by it. Anyway. Oh my God. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let, let's, let's skip the Ford news and, and let's go to your suburban news. So have we talked about this on the show yet? Yes, we talked about, uh, yes, we did. We talked, we introduced it last week. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I have four kids. We have a 2008 Sequoia. Um, our other vehicle was a Highlander. And what we've come to find out is that now my three oldest all play baseball. And so during baseball seasons, sometimes one of us has to throw at least two to three of them together in the car. And even the Sequoia was not big enough if we had to throw everybody in it with baseball bags, with a wagon, with a stroller, with lawn chair. Like it just, it escalated so quickly. And even with, like, I didn't want to drive it around with a cargo escalated. top all summer long. Escalated, yeah. No <laughs> uh, escalate with a T, not a D. Um, so we bought a 2017 Suburban. It's a Premier, uh, which is just okay. an LTZ in 2017 in a different batch which i actually had to research um <laughs> the best was having the conversation with a guy who had a, like a 2016 ltz and i was like no i found one uh, a year newer and a trim level higher and he was like what <laughs> sorry thing. I, didn't, I didn't know yet i had to research it anyway got the suburban uh driving it home from the dealer that night i'm changing lanes on the highway and the right turn signal would flash twice normally and then go into like hyperspace mode and I was like, all right, so something's out in the system, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we've only had the truck for like a week now. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I can't say we've had it a full week because I haven't had it since Wednesday. Um, so I, I contacted the dealer that the, I, it, and it didn't get the night on the way home. It did not give me the notification on like the center console, like that something was failing. It was just doing the weird flashing. Throughout the next week or so, it started telling me the right rear right rear turn indicator has failed is what the prompt would say and i was like sweet i just got it i never do extended warranties 
mainly because I buy Toyota products, but I bought the extended warranty on this thing. <laughs> oh, good. Even though like this is less than a week since I bought it, the dealer is like, no, 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 we'll, we'll handle this. I was like, thank you. As they should. So dropped it off Wednesday morning. They're just going to investigate it, figure out what's going on. Uh, when I called Wednesday, like midday, they were like, okay, so you have aftermarket turn signals or like turn signal tail light or something. I was like, pull up what? Like they were the full Escalade giant, you know, the, uh, the one that goes from the, the one, they're like half the height of the back of the truck. They're literally like, yeah, no, no, not half the height. They are the entire height. Oh yeah. Full body height. Yeah. Full body, full body height. height from the oh bumper God. to the roof line is how high these things go. And I just hadn't noticed that that's what they were, which I felt kind of. Are you serious? You didn't notice that the truck looked like an Escalade in the back instead of a Suburban? It's like no, a because whole thing. All I needed was the seats and the cargo. Like I didn't, I didn't go and like, I, it's the lamest thing I've ever done as like an actual an automotive person. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to literally get an image of the wow. Escalade taillights right now. And I can't find one there. That one's big enough. Um, uh, so yeah. And also like I'm inside it when these things are activated normally. So see literally just above the bumper, almost all the way to the roof line. So they told me this, like they called these aftermarket, which I thought was hilarious. I was like, that's the no AM park guys. Good. Nice try. Um, and they're like, but we're going to put on factory Chevy taillights for you. And I was like, sweet. When can I get it back? And they're like, well, it's not gonna be ready today. We got the parts coming. I was like, okay, so tomorrow. And they're like, sure. I called today because today was tomorrow. Called today. I'm like, hey, when am I going to be able to pick it up like later this afternoon? What's going on? They're like, well, we had to order the trim pieces because the trim pieces being the tail light on the Escalade is the same length as the tail light on the Suburban plus that body colored or black painted section that goes from where the rear window starts to the roof. Correct. Yeah, the D pillar. Yes. Yes. Uh, and again, searching for an image yeah. as fast as possible, and it's not working out. Um, now, Chris, the first one that you shared with us, that wasn't your vehicle with Escalade badging on the back or anything, right? No, that was not. That was, that <laughs> Are was you just... sure you didn't buy an Escalade? <laughs> <laughs> Fairly certain I didn't buy an Escalade. And, and, and what's news to me, guys, is I didn't know those those taillights were interchangeable at all. I thought you'd have to do like body mod modifications or something like that. Yeah. You would think, right? I'm so, pretty sure because they roll off the same line it's just a matter of if they get those full length light assemblies put on or if it's partial body partial tail light so yeah now i'm seeing that it's possible but yeah i never knew that was possible before so this is the piece that i'm now waiting on hmm. because when it showed okay. up to the so I, I bought the truck from a, a buick gmc dealer uh and so when these pieces that they ordered showed up they were like primered black like black plastic or whatever so she's like well we have them in the collision shop being painted and i'm like all right i might actually like this dealer it's been a long time since i liked the dealership um but so the reason it's taken an extra day is they those pieces were painted today when i called they were baking um i'm not a hundred percent uh fluent in collision repair shop but i'm fairly certain that means like they're like warming them and drying it and making sure the paint sets up they're probably in a cure for like 24 hours i hope it's not a full 24 hours because she told me the truck would be ready hopefully tomorrow morning <laughs> uh so yeah hopefully we get it back tomorrow we're a family of six and we only have one vehicle right now and it's been not terrible but it's like anything i do with a vehicle there's always some weird element to it like Nothing ever goes easy. Well, yeah, that's a new one. Say that again. Fingers crossed for you. Thank you. I yeah. Hopefully, it proves better otherwise. So my yeah. all my all my friends are Toyota or Land Rover guys, and here I've shown up with a Chevy. So I'm kind of like at least be more reliable than the Land Rover. Like I, you don't have to go be Toyota great, but like just don't let me be worse than the Land Rover. I think I saw a story recently too that the Suburban and the Tahoe are rated among the least reliable per consumer reports. Yeah. yeah. They are, but they also interestingly are longevity. Longevity. They're like yeah. on the road for in the top five for like longest, I don't know if it's mileage or age, but I noticed that mileage, too. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, they're, they're um, I, I saw the IC car study. Yeah. And yeah. it was mostly, it, it was more mileage leaning than anything. And it was, uh, the study was, yeah, most, uh, the most number of this particular model uh, that has surpassed 200,000 miles and What's... the Tahoe Suburban were in the, the top right. ranking. Yeah, yeah. That's the joke, right? Like a Chevy will run shittier longer than anything else will run. <laughs> it, it'll give you problems, but man, it'll last forever. <laughs> uh, so my, we, we had a, an 03 Yukon XL for, I think we got it at like 102 or 103,000 miles used. Uh, and that was like 2000, I think it was like 2009 Nine. when we got it. Um, that was good, that was <laughs> good math. <laughs> like you look at you doing the mileage math in your head. Uh, I'm glad it was an average vehicle. Um, and that lasted us until like 2013, 2014-ish. Mm-hmm. That's not bad. That's not bad, but like it, it went to 248,000 miles. Like we, we put some mileage on it, which we're going to put some mileage on this. So yeah, yeah. Hopefully the and repair it'll, it'll costs it. are- You're going to have, you know, some nickel and dime problems along the way like that. And that's what, get, you know, ranks it so low on CR, but eventually it'll, it'll go the distance. Literally. So it, it's already, so like the taillight one, the dealership's taken care of, but it's already costing me money because- it came with a, I think I told Ross this, it came with like a one month trial or three gigabytes worth of like the 4G LTE data in it. Mm-hmm. The kids blew through that in six days. They were like, we're done. We're like, what are you, are you re-upping? So like I actually re-upped for, for that. So, and it wasn't terrible. I've been very impressed with oh, GM's uh, for you know T-Mobile based. I think it's T-Mobile based. Maybe it's, it's AT&T. AT and T based. Oh, is it AT and T? Okay, yeah. yeah. And I've I when I had back in twenty the twenty seventeen model year, I was testing the Chevy Silverado fifteen hundred Redline, and that was oh, I the forgot about that package. <laughs> yeah, that that was the um, <clears throat> that truck towed Project Stork up to SEMA that year, and I really. really? And, but there was a, there, I was up in Willow Springs for something right before I, I went to SEMA that year. There was some other event going on. And I, yeah, I wanted to get on Slack to notify my colleagues about whatever I needed to tell them. <laughs> and it was so convenient having, because my Sprint phone didn't have a 4G LTE signal <laughs> at Willow Springs. So I get into the ship and like, well, I got internet in the Chevy. Let's see if it works. And it worked like a charm. So yeah, it, it can be really useful if you're on the go and you need to reach out and you otherwise wouldn't be able to if you had a different service provider. So yeah, I, I think it's definitely worth it. So, so we, you go ahead, Chris. We are uh, old Sprint customers who are now T-Mobile customers. Uh, so the yeah. phones are all tied to T-Mobile, but uh, the, the daughter's Kindle and, uh, my youngest son, he has an iPhone, but we didn't turn on any of the cell stuff yet. So he relies on Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So like, it's yeah. huge for him right now. He's like, Oh, I can use my phone in the car. I'm like, yeah, your phone. Okay, buddy. It's a, basically an iPad. Or... <laughs> yeah. What were you gonna say, yeah. Ross? No, I was going to say that that was actually a perfect segue because I did want to ask what the latest is on project stork. So <laughs> <laughs> Three years, any <laughs> podcasts that go on or people on my Instagram stories, anytime I post something, it's, it's a question that haunts me. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Almost like at least, at least like at least once a week for the past three years. I'm grateful for it. It's, it's a fun haunt because project stork helped me get on the map in many ways. Like, you know, it got me onto the smoking tire and like, you know, it made a little, a few more people know about me, which is great. I, I'm an attention whore. So it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, and and, and so I, I do relish in the question, but, it, but, but the reason why I'm, re- I mean, I, I relish in it that people are interested in the project, that people are interested in the very vehicle that brought me home from the hospital after I was born. Um, so the story yeah, is killer. It, it's fortunate when I don't have updates for people, especially these past three years. <laughs> However, <laughs> having said that, the synchronicity lined up for this show Ooh. because there is movement again with projects. Ooh, okay, that's good. So a couple of weeks ago, I was visiting my mom and that's where the vehicle stored. It's back there because it was at the Haynes Manual shop for almost a year, maybe more, a little bit, but yeah, around a year from 2017 to 2018 while we were working on it. And then, you know, I ended my position at Internet Brands, so I lost all my sponsorship. And so, yeah, the, the projects sat dormant. And I said, okay, well, I will throw money at the problem when I eventually have money to throw. And I 
was, hey, there we go. Yeah. Nice. So uh, <laughs> look at those two handsome dudes. <laughs> In fact, this guy is sitting across from me right now. I say Brad looks the same. <laughs> yep. That's good news, Brad. <laughs> look at that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the beard looks almost the same. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. The guy doesn't age. So I, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so um, where was I? I? I lost my train of thought. Uh, so it's at your Finally had money. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Money to be thrown. So I got, I got, I had a pretty successful 2020, and I came close to having, starting to have the disposable <laughs> income that I would need to start throwing money at Project Stork if, if, if things would have continued the, the way they were, because I was lucky enough to land um, uh, reviewing cars at Amazon Vehicles, and that was fantastic for me, and I was getting Amazon money, and it was lovely. It was lovely, and then that ended December 31st. Uh, and that became my main client because Rob Report, their budget froze, and all of a sudden I'm at a loss. And like, all, all, basically, all my work ended in the beginning of this year. So it's been a challenging year this year. And I was talking about it with my mom a couple of weeks ago, and I'm like, she's like, well, we got, we got to, we got to get the car moving this year, or else it's just gonna rot, and all the work that you guys did is gonna go to waste. I'm like, I know, but I don't know when I'm gonna have the money. So yeah, and she's like, okay, well then I'll I'll I'll, I'll sponsor whatever we need to do to get it running because we we have to prevent this car from. <laughs> she wants that car out of her house. <laughs> yeah, she wants she wants the garage space back too because there's a '56 Ford F100 sitting next to Project Stork that she wants to remove too. So it was my dad's baby, and um, you know, gotcha. she's trying to figure out what she wants to do with that because you know, my my oldest brother is the only one interested in the family of keeping that thing alive, but I could mm -hmm. I could. Get I'd love to see that truck running again, but I'm not going to devote any of my resources to that. I'm I'm devoted to Project Stork. Paging so, Jeff Glocker. As, as a <laughs> Jeff Glocker. No. Yeah, Waiting no. for him to like swoop in. No, Jeff, no. <laughs> yeah. Jeff did Ford trucks. He's done. He did yeah, a 66. He, yeah, he, a 56 is even older. Like he's got his, we'll talk about that later. But uh, that, that shit has failed. It's it's a very interesting truck though, because my my dad, he used to own a, he, he bought in, in 1966, he, when he was like 24 years old, he bought a brand new GTO that had a 389 in it. And that had that 389 had some reliability issues. So Pontiac replaced that engine and gave him a 67 models 400. So he did the 400 swap. Then my dad ended up crashing that GTO about a year and a half into ownership. And then, uh, so I, it might've been total, I don't know what the case was, but he ended up removing that engine from the GTO and putting it in his uh, 56 Ford F100 that he acquired later that year or something like that, which originally had like a straight six or something, or, or like a Cleveland in it or something like that. So, so like triple the horsepower. Yeah, and it basically made it the a, a, a precursor to the Lightning because when that thing oh, ran, so oh my God, that thing was a riot. It was Is it really dropped at all? With the Say it again. Is it lowered at all? No, no, no. It's stock height and everything. Okay. It, it looks like full farm truck but it ran like a, like a lightning. It was just amazing. Um, and then in 2000, my dad was driving to work and he hydroplaned on the freeway, spun around, and as he was slowing down, a semi hit him and Shit. kind of wiped out the whole... So, so yeah, we're looking at F100 right now. And so the side that we're looking at, the whole... The, the side that's, that's nearest us, because this is on YouTube, right, too? This yep. is going to be on YouTube eventually? Yep. Okay, so the side, yeah, the, 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 the corner that's close to us, that's all crunched in. Oh. And then if you look at the corner of the cab right behind the vents, that has been impacted too a little bit. So Oof. I'm, so I'm thinking either you, you I, I don't know if it's possible to cut that part of the cab out and replace it with another cab's metal or replace the cab altogether. If you, if you were to fix the truck and bring it back to life to, into reasonable shape, you know, with like a new paint job and everything, it's ostensibly worth, uh, Brad was telling me yesterday, like 15 grand. And that seems about right to me. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's somebody's passion project, but it's never, I, I like the truck, but it doesn't really have an impact on my history. Project Stork being the car that brought me home from the hospital after I was born. <laughs> that was the car that made me like cars from day one. Well, literally day two, because I was like two days old when I came home from the hospital. So that you know that's part of my history and i that that serves as like my tribute to my father my, my my father who's been dead now for eight years so um yeah um the truck you know it'd be great to see it alive again but again 
uh, Project Stork is where it's at for me. Now, what, back to that story. Can't fault you there. What year yeah. is the 9-11? The 9-11, it's 1977 9-11 okay. S. And so it's got the 2.7 in it, 157 horsepower as rated by the factory back then. And uh, zero to 60 time, I believe, of 7.7 seconds as rated per the owner's manual. The, the, that, that information is actually inside the owner's manual. That That's crazy. Does it, uh-huh. does it have a line in it that says that Porsche is two syllables? <laughs> I'm pretty yes. sure it does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so that is the, uh, almost the same horsepower. My Miata is a 2013 yeah. and has 158 horsepower. <laughs> How far cars have come. But about about 500 pounds less. So yeah, when that yeah. car is running again, it's going to be a riot. Um, so so yeah, what I want to do with it is, um, seeing as my mom's helping out now, thank goodness, is um, what the, the plan is. I just uh, booked a Honda Ridgeline, the the updated 22 model. Nice. I believe it's 22 yep. here, right? Good yeah. trucks. Is it the yeah. HPD? It's not a 21. I believe it's 22. So it's the yeah, it's going to be the, the sport model with the HPD appearance package in white with the gold wheels. Bronze. It's yep. going to look amazing in the photos. We're going to, I'm going to run the story in auto conduct. And um, yes, yeah, so we're going to get that ridge line, May 6th to the 12th. I am going to hook it up to a trailer, put Stork on it, and then drive it up to Walnut Grove, California, okay. to Morris Motors. Sutton Mor- no, Morris, he's a good friend of mine. Um, I've been up there before to visit his shop with my friend, Hiram Burnt. And uh, that's, that's how I first got acquainted with him. And we, we hit it off well. So I, he's somebody I trust. I originally wanted to take it to TLG Auto, Marco Garacci over there. Marco, at, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's is... one of the best, if not the best in Southern California. But unfortunately, he unfollowed me on social media, on both my Instagram accounts. Oh, so no. Like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's like, I know it sounds petty. It's like, oh, he unfollowed me on social media. But, like, there's there's more. Like, there's when people unfollow you on social media, like, they, they like, I don't know. I don't know what his reasoning is because – Maybe he just didn't know me well enough, but he was the one who kind of pinpointed what the final fueling issue was for me. And like, he's helped right. me out just in his advice. Like when I, I saw him at the, uh, the DWA uh, Coastal Range Rally film premiere back in 20, late 2017, I think it was. That's forever And ago. I told him what was going on. I told him what we had done with Stork that year. He's like, oh, well, well, check this out and do this thing with the fuel distributor and try to de-varnish it this way. I'm like, I'm not mm-hmm. going to put a torch to my fuel distributor because I'll blow myself <laughs> up because I'm, I've only taken one semester of auto shop in, in high school. So I'm not going to do right. anything <laughs> like that. This is going to be a Porsche. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, thank goodness I had Brad when he was willing to help out at Haynes, you know, because I would have gotten nowhere with that project without Brad doing basically all the work. So God bless that guy. Um, <laughs> God bless this guy right here. So he moved chairs. He's like yeah. a cat. He has moved. <laughs> he did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for those of you who for for that for the one or two people uh, who don't know who this guy is, he he's <laughs> I mean, the fact that he drove eight hours down from Reno twice over that whole Project Stork, you know, Haynes uh, partnership that we had, I can't thank the guy enough. I will sing his praises until the day I die because if it weren't for him and a couple other people who helped too, Jonathan um, Klein, Ashton Kammerling, uh, Kammerling, uh, Kyron okay. Burn as well, uh, 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 Rick Radcliffe, I want to do my shout outs, and, and uh, Tyson Kloos, the, 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 those, those guys too. That's a crew. Uh, yeah, people came in. They wanted to be a part of it. They wanted to be a part of this this history, mm-hmm. uh, which is amazing, and, I, and I'm very grateful for that. But 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 Brad, being the overall um, you know uh, expert, the, the the overarching project itself, um, I couldn't have done it without him. Uh, we wouldn't have gotten as far as we did with you know to, even just to this point without him. So so uh, much gratitude to this man here. Um, and he can so hear I, me say this. He can literally hear me right now. Um, regarding, I think so. Oh no, it, now they are. That they're in or out? They're out now. He can hear oh, me now. Oh, he can hear me say this. The eight-hour drive, he didn't hate. He, we know Brad's a glutton for punishment, so. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, yeah. Dude loves road trips, too, so. Loves, yeah, he and I share that affinity. I would, uh, if I could drive across the country right now, in a moment's notice, I totally would. Done. Say the word. Yeah, yeah. It depends um, on what I'm yeah, in. So, so. <laughs> for Make me, it work. matters what car I'm in or what vehicle. Like, I was kind of we're going to montana the summer it's two full days with four kids i was kind of dreading it 
I don't, I don't want to jinx the suburban, but I'm kind of excited for the suburban. <laughs> hey, you know, it, it, it covers miles nicely. I, I really like that generation of, uh, is that, um, it's not GMT 900. It's like the one after that, but that generation. One XXX. It's, it's one XXX. Yeah, right, right. Um, that generation of Chevy truck is, is incredible. And I, mm -hmm. I would have to say that I actually like the previous generation of Chevy trucks more than the current generation. And so uh, maybe, I mean, the suburban, it's a different story because there's a lot more refinement in the current suburban side, probably like the current suburban more, Suspension. but, yeah. but yeah, that, that, that generation right. of Chevy trucks was amazing. You know, it was lighter weight. It was smaller, which is better for me because I like a lighter weight vehicle. Um, so yeah, Chris, I think you did right by getting the 2017. Um, the, the funny yeah, part. Back to Stork to, 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 to answer the question. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, no, go to Stork. No, you said I want to. The funny part. Well, the, the, the funny, funny part. part is, I think so. The our Sequoia is a 2008. I think every modern large SUV looks like the 2008 Sequoia. <laughs> they, I mean, they all kind of like the Expedition shape and proportions. The Suburban, the, the Tahoes, same. they all share the same proportions now. Certainly do. I, I like the more rounded um, elements of the Sequoia. I think it's the prettiest one among them all. Which is, um, it was considered well, the, the ugliest the, one the, for like 10 years. Models, not, yeah. uh, so, so wait, your 08 Sequoia is, a, no, that's a previous generation. That's no, the, that's, it's the first that's year the of the second, second gen. gen. First year of the second gen. I need to look it up now to see what oh. 2008. <laughs> So the, there's the only one, really two ways that like Sequoia gens, can look. Yeah. <laughs> there's only two. Oh, oh, so it's a pretty gen. Oh no, you. Wait, I have oh, the ugly a, one. Current, that's a current. Yeah. yeah. It's current gen. Okay. Yeah. The, the the current one. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I like the original one more. Um. The new one is fine. And it's, it's inoffensive. But the the yeah, first I gen looks like design. what a truck should look like. Yes. Because it, it was it had the this this beautiful you know, it had the truck proportions but it was rounded. Yes. With like a night, like mm -hmm. it was like the 2000s version interpretation of 90s design, which yes. I really liked. Yeah. I'm going, I'm yeah. going for press so. photos for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah. So, so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to use a Ridgeline tow up, uh, stork to, uh, Morris Motors in Walnut Grove. And, um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see where we go from there. Um, and, and, and the great thing about Sutton is that, he picks up a lot of cars from down here to either fix them or restore them or whatever. And so he is more than willing to, he, he was like, Oh, I can, I can come down and pick it up for you. I'm like, Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm like, that's no, an I'll offer drive it up and I'll, yeah. I'll make a story out of it and, you know, make some money off the story. And then, um, and then, you know, you, you can, you can drive it back down. So, so yeah, I, um, I'm looking forward to that. The guy is just all about the bedside manner. You know, so the personal he's, touch with service. is he like a, a, a German tech? Yeah, so if you go into a shop, there is beautiful, just beautiful German, English, Italian, all manner of European cars sitting on lifts, and he's got like a bunch of lifts or you know uh, cars kind of like stacked up on each other and stuff like that. His his um, Instagram just, is gorgeous. The, 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 I wish Instagram had. Uh, 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 an aroma uh, way of like, you know, <laughs> sniffing you know, smell or scratch and smell or whatever. <laughs> oh my God. I wish it had that because when you walk into this shop, he's got this. So yeah, we, you, know, you can see his showroom and in the, in the, like, that's his showroom in the front of the front of house. Oh, Jesus. But then that's the, yeah, now we're looking at the shop and just the aromas in there. You can see Sutton working on that 308 there, um, which is uh, yeah, it just, he's got in, incredible examples. It's like um, it's, it's very Radwood in there. It's like a mini Radwood show in there which i love but it looks um, kind of frozen yeah. in time it does it really is and he so even though he's kind of like in the outskirts of of the 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 greater sacramento area it's he's like right along highway 12 i think it is which is a major kind of alternative thoroughfare for people who are commuting from the bay area up into sacramento so there's a lot of traffic that goes in front of his shop mm. and um yeah oh that's his porsche it's i think it's an 88 um, that thing is gorgeous yeah, 88 carrera yeah which is really really nice. and when yeah when i was driving when i <laughs> when i was up there i was testing the tesla model y dual motor long range and even in a vehicle that quick i was still you know i was like oh wow okay yeah this thing's fast like the tesla is is actually kind of having to work a little bit to keep up with this porsche so he's got it tuned just right um oh okay that chevy truck there very unassuming, you would think, 
but it's got like a 600 horsepower, like a 700 horsepower NASCAR <laughs> engine in it. That my thing what? screams. Oh my God. That truck is maniacal. Absolutely maniacal. So yeah, he, you know, he, he totally dabbles in everything. Yeah. You would never know. Like this, this European specialist, he's got like the, the most Murica <laughs> workshop right? ever. Yeah. It is pretty funny. Mm. Um, yeah. So really just, yeah, it's just a stand up guy and there's really not many people I would trust with project stork but i absolutely trust him with it and uh yeah if you're if you're listening to this up in the bay area up in the sacramento area definitely check out his shop um he's he, he does amazing work and um there's just yeah it just it's dripping in culture that's very oh, cool this is also a perfect gosh. time on tuesday this past tuesday i drove my first porsche no way and it, it was <laughs> an 85 944 na stick shift car nothing special I drove it, I don't know, it was like maybe 10 or 15 minutes at most. Mm -hmm. And it was, I mean, it, you know, the car wasn't perfect. The clutch grabbed like within the last like half or third of an inch of the travel. And wow. it was a little sloppy, but, <laughs> but as soon as I got in it and was like looking around and, and we pulled out to the road, I was like, motherfucker i'm gonna have to tell all these people that i don't get it that now i fucking get it <laughs> and, and i'm sorry i didn't hear the make what what make of porsche did you drive it was a 944 which oh, you okay. know not holy sorry, grail sorry. or anything not by any chance model. yeah no yeah, that's okay so um, 944, was it a turbo or was nope, it like a nope just an na car but you right. know tax sweeps the opposite way from anything i've, I've driven isn't the oh, so like earlier model it was an 85 yeah but okay it was okay. It was cool. I mean, I now I'm, of course, you know, now it's in my head. But is the 944 the one that shares Volkswagen parts or is it Audi parts? So those modular are those. Um, or am I thinking uh, 924? The Brad knows. No, Brad will answer. <laughs> of course, Brad Ask knows. Him. Yeah, and Brad knows he's Mr. Porsche. Is is but 944? Does that have Audi parts or Volkswagen parts or is that 924? is basically a wide body 924 with a different engine. So they have a uh, Mark I Rabbit front suspension and Super Beetle rear suspension. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> in 80, late 85 through 92 when they ended production. Well, when they went to- 968, yeah. Um, it was all custom, uh, different offset. I mean, Porsche basically re-engineered the suspension. Hmm. So uh, for for the early ones, eighty three to early eighty five, it's very cobbled together Audi uh, Volkswagen part. <laughs> so buy an eighty six or newer is the takeaway. Twenty four had an Audi engine. That's what it is. Okay, so that's what I was thinking. I actually ended up in a postal Jeep. Oh no way! Because because Audi sold that engineering design to American Motors. Holy crap! To AMC, so it ended up in a postal. There's there's all kinds of stuff that used that little four cylinder. Most of them carbureted, but the 924 was fuel injected, same engine. So you could technically take a postal Jeep motor and put it in a Porsche, and it's the, the real engine that belongs there. I, mean, I never saw that Mr. that crossover Porsche. coming. Mr. Porsche. Seriously, God, I mean. Better than any encyclopedia or Wikipedia entry I could search. Crazy. Same. I mean, the guy's ridiculous. Well, I'm like, I, I don't even know the yeah. question I would type to get to the point where I would discover the fact that a Porsche 924 engine also resides in postal Jeeps. Like, I don't, I don't even know how I begin that search. We just asked I was Brad. struggling to like, wait, what do you call those? the modular cars, the, um, the, Transaxle. The transaxle cars. Yeah, I'm like yeah. struggling to even get <laughs> my brain. I know. Like, oh, thank God Brad's here. <laughs> Can we go back to lift kits? That's way easier. Yeah, dude. Oh my God, so much simpler. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So let's talk, let's talk four by four since that's what we're kind of supposed to be doing here. So you've yeah. driven some interesting stuff. I was going through your Instagram. Yes. Um, we can hit them all. Where do you want to start? TRD Pro, Forerunner, 
the baby Duramax Silverado DBX power wagon, new, well, old frontier, new engine, uh, seat time in a Cherokee yeah, Trailhawk. Yeah. I, I have a lot to say about that. Okay. So There's, let's, uh, let's yeah, do TRD um, pro forerunner uh, I'll, I'll first. Go from the top now. Yeah. Let's do Actually, it. Yeah, yeah, let's just do the top deck. I have a lot to say about all these. So um, okay. TRD Pro Forerunner was really awesome because that was um, that was a really fun trip. That was the so the picture you're looking at, the pictures you're looking at are the day after thank no 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 is the the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, 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 that's right. It was so yeah, a few days after Thanksgiving. And uh, me and Kyron Burnt went out, we we're like, let's yeah, let's go shoot this thing in Glamis. So we, um, he and I, like, because Kyron doesn't have any family in Southern California because he's from Canada and South Africa, um, he, uh, I, I basically have adopted him. And so I always invite him to my Thanksgiving, my family Thanksgiving meal every year. And so he was spending time with us at my mom's house. And my mom lives in the Inland Empire, which is a little bit closer to you know, like 40 miles closer to Arizona than LA is. So it's a little bit nice jump to, to get over to the desert if you want to go from there. So we stayed at my mom's house that night and then we left at like 3.30 in the morning to get sunrise photos, you know, three hour drive out to Glamis in the southeastern corner, the very southeastern corner of Southern California. So it, you know, it's bordering Yuma, Arizona at that point. And uh, yeah, I mean, these are like one of the premier dunes not in the US, but in the world and a great shoot location, obviously, as a result of 40 miles wide of dunes. And nobody and, else there. It looks like it was empty. Well, it looked empty, but we just found a good spot. So oh, that, <laughs> Thanksgiving weekend is one of the biggest weekends for Glamis. And there's about 100,000 people out there on that, at that weekend. Oh, sure. However, because this was Sunday morning, that's when everybody starts rolling out. Right. Um, but okay. there, were, there, there, was a, there was a shit ton of people at, at Glamis this weekend, but we were able to find some, some secluded areas, luckily. And I love the way those photos turned out. And, um, I, you know, my, my, my photography wouldn't be minimally acceptable if it weren't for my personal photo coach, Kyron Brunt, who is amazing. <laughs> Go follow him on Instagram, uh, Kyron underscore Brent, K-E-I-R-O-N underscore B-E-R-N-D-T. Is it Dude's amazing. And isn't there a story about Kyron like hanging out the back of a station wagon or a minivan getting racetrack shots? Or That's something? Kyron's life. Like I've, I've, okay. I've been his, I've, I've driven him in my press cars when, when he's like doing little projects for speed hunters. I, the, the most recent time I had a Mazda CX-9 and yeah, he was hanging out the back of the hatch at um, the, like near the YouTube space in, in West LA. And we're going back and forth on it. Like it was a, it was God. during like, it was in the earlier part of COVID when everybody was really, really afraid to go out. So we had this entire office complex to ourselves and I had the CX-9 and yeah, I had the hatch open and everything. And this guy's nice. just, uh, he's, you know, we've, I've, I've, um, I've, I've picked him up in my Audi, my personal car, my Audi A4, a 2008 Audi A4, 2.0 T manual, six speed front track. And I, um, uh, yeah, it was like, we were, we were helping. Uh, oh yeah. We were shooting something for, we, we, yeah, that's right. Kyron was shooting Larry Chen's 996 turbo, I think. So yeah, the, you know, like Kyron was that, 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 that was the day that I learned, oh, you can tie the seatbelt around your <laughs> arm and then open the passenger front door and hang your body halfway out and get some amazing shots that way. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like super risky belaying. <laughs> yes. This goes wrong at all. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I've, I've learned the tricks of the trade through uh, many of the tricks of the trade through him. Um, and yeah, very grateful for his tutelage over the years. His stuff but, um, is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, look at this dude's shots. Like, yeah, just really good. You'll see. I don't go to the extremes that he does with the color grading, but if you look, especially at my forerunner shots, you can see the similarities. And I've used some of his color grading um, uh, presets and everything. And then, like, I offshoot off what he does, and I kind of just make them a little bit more subtle um, for my purposes because I'm not trying to be too artistic. I'm trying to kind of be more journalistic. Um, and so, but yeah, that, that I eight photo is just amazing. Yeah. That's one of my favorite. Dude, photos so actually. Good. I like well, anyway. So, so forerunner, Sorry, oh, forerunner. Yeah. Forerunner. We could do this. Oh, all yeah, forerunner was really yeah, Forerunner was really impressive because, um, I mean, it did fine, obviously off-road. It's what you would expect, but it was also really comfortable on road. It, it, it actually was somewhat nimble. Um, you know, I, I was, uh, I was a little bit upset. There's a, um, as, as we were going to, uh, we were, we were 
there's this right turn on on green only near my mom's house and we're about to go there to for thanksgiving dinner and all these people were making this right turn on red when they're not allowed to and i always abide by that because you know it's because you know yeah I, I try to be you know a nice person and, and like i'm seeing all these people I'm like Arr! and then people behind me in in not the all the far right lane but the the one run over that's that you can still turn right from or go straight back onto the freeway um, people were start, starting to honk at me thinking that, oh, what's this guy doing? He should be, you know, turn, making a right on red. So now I'm getting all upset and like, Argh! and I, so I speed off through this red, you know, once the light turns green, I'm like speeding off. I'm like, wow, Forerunner handled that really well. Like <laughs> you, there, was, you, there was like a certain amount of body lean and then it kind of just set itself down and powered through. And that was really impressive. So I did not expect that amount of nimble attitude from a Forerunner. But yeah, the TRD Pro, it's got those really cool shocks and yep. a little bit upgraded, but it seems like it's even more capable on the road as a result of those updated uh, you know, Bill Steens or whatever it has on it. It's been- I think they're like, Fox. Oh, they Fox, okay. It's been like four yeah, months since I've written yeah. that. Rusty at this point. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, that, that I was, yeah, that was the biggest uh, surprise for me with that one. Um, hmm. and, and yeah, really quiet, really comfortable. It just, yeah, it, very, very charming. You know, it, it, despite it being- such an old vehicle, you know, uh, 11 years old now at this point, it's, it still feels comfortable and amenable for everyday driving. And it just, it oozes charm because it has that amount of bandwidth for daily driving duty. So I, yeah, I, yeah there's a, there's a soft spot in my heart for the TRD pro forerunner. I owned a TRD off-road forerunner, a fifth gen very briefly. Um, I bought it new. It was amazing you know, found like the only dealer in the country that was willing to sell it like below sticker. I uh, drove yeah. it for, <laughs> for, I had it for like nine months and sold it at a profit. Yeah. There's, I mean, what, that's typically a 10 K markup vehicle, right? No, it was just a TRD off-road. So they usually just sell them oh. like, they, they usually don't discount them below sticker, but this place up in Maine was like, okay, you know, willing yeah. to take one like off the boat. Sure. Yeah, that TRD Pro that I had, it, it's you know the MSRP on it was fifty three. Um, okay. Yeah, and but I, I'd imagine dealers are you know especially in something in California. California. Yeah. Yeah, we're probably charging ten k over sticker for it, and I was getting more rubbernecking in that Forerunner than I was in the McLaren six hundred LT I had like two months <laughs> earlier. Nobody cared about the McLaren. Nobody. Whereas that four, like, yeah, people were like, what's the, <laughs> like, people were giving me the side eye, the mad dog, like, I'm jealous, I'm jealous. Yeah, they think, you know, TRD Pro Forerunner is like big dog in the Forerunner world, so, and everybody's buying Forerunners these days. Yeah, actually, my next door neighbor, he has a, just like a regular limited, but he has knobby tires in it to make it look a bit more TRD. He's like, dude, man, I wish, like, I, I, I it's like a 2016 he has, mm -hmm. he's like, I really trade in my 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 16 for a brand new yep. like, that's how it goes like, why you offer it all the time. Like, <laughs> right the, the interior of the limited is so much nicer yeah like yeah and, but, but you know, people a lot of people who buy these things they buy them for that image factor because it does get looks and it makes you look really rugged and off-roady and outdoorsy yep. and yep. you know big swing and you know what um it, it does have <laughs> that effect on, on at least other people who are looking at you true no that <laughs> it's all about how you look ain't that right. the truth especially in image conscious southern california so on on that on that note um dbx oh okay dbx was my favorite vehicle that i tested in 2020 um I, it was um every other aston martin i've driven before that has kind of not really hit the spot with me um uh, especially db11 i i like the db11 don't, don't, don't get me wrong but the DB11, when I first drove it back in 2016, I want to say, when that came out, um, that was $214,000 at the time. It's up to two forty dollars now. But back then, it was two fourteen, two twelve, something like that. And I'm like, how is this double, more than double the price of an LC500, and yet it doesn't feel as good as an LC500? Mm -hmm. So that was a disappointment for me on... on uh, every db11 i've driven i mean they've gotten better over the years i like the d I, I like the v8 twin turbo more um the um 
the AMR, the DB11 AMR I tested last summer, that wasn't bad. They're not bad, but for the pr for what you're getting, I just wish there was more. I ideally, a DB11 would satisfy me if it were that perfect midway point between Mercedes AMG GTS and Bentley Continental GT. If it could split that difference with, you know, like being outright sporty, mm -hmm. grand tour still, yeah. and full luxury car convertible cruiser that can go fast. It just happens to be able to go fast. It could, it could split that difference. It would have been, I, I would have been just mm -hmm. over the, over the moon right. about it. Right. Long haul comfort, but also yeah. big time power. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's not bad, but for the price. LC 500 done. Yeah. 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 But, 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 Jeez. but then, but then DBX happens. <laughs> oh my God. The DBX. Really? Yeah, it, it solves all my issues with Aston Martin in one vehicle. It was, um, they had a really good drive route planned up Highway 33 from Ojai. I hope for, so. <laughs> and that's arguably the best driving road in California. Um, we, it was, it was, Glucker was the lead and then Brett Burke was uh, number oh two. I was number three. It was just the three of us on that press trip. And that was delightful. Uh, and it was delightful. And we were hustling the shit out of these SUVs that had no right to handle as well as they did. But 33 is full of camber changes and mid-corner bumps that make your you know, unsettled suspension mid-turn. And you would think that this is a, you know, like a 5,000 pound SUV. It should not be able, it, it should not be this composed. But my goodness, the way the torque was vectoring, the way the suspension was so forgiving. I love a forgiving car. The quickest way to Manuel's heart is through the forgiveness <laughs> of the suspension. And the DBX had that in spades. Really? Yeah. It's yeah, not it was too just, stiff. Yeah. It's not just like oversprung or anything to try to be sporty. Yeah. No, it was the perfect balance of comfort and sport. <laughs> uh, the, um, oh my God. You know, like, there, there's 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 okay cars there's 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 not really no bad cars anymore uh unless you're brad oh, no. but there's really no if you're if you're <laughs> objective minded about cars trucks and suvs and there's two of those vehicles brad doesn't like he's only a car guy but if you're if you're open-minded and like this asshole you <laughs> will you can <laughs> you can appreciate <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I forgot where I was. I would be rating him, but, but yeah, that the DBX is just, um, oh yeah, I was saying there's, there's, there's okay. There's good. And then there is great, fantastic over the moon vehicles. DBX is that because the way you can tell that with me on my rating scale is okay. If I'm driving an okay car, all right, not bad. Cool. All right. Yeah. Price, right. I guess targeting the market. All right, there we go. All right. That's an okay car. And that's about as bad as it gets. Then you have a good car. It's like, all right. Hey, oh, I have a chuckle here, chuckle there. <laughs> all right. DBX was. <laughs> that literally, that's that's a reenactment of what coming out of my vocal cord behind the wheel, Highway 33, the DBX. <laughs> Fucking riot. I will reserve my one F word for that. <laughs> okay. All right. Absolutely. Well, I mean, that's like the highest phrase it can get. No. What? Okay. What else has registered that reaction? <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's a high recommend for me. High has recommend. anything else brought that reaction? Ah, uh, um, Nissan GTR, uh, SL, uh, Mercedes AMG GT S. Uh, Good cars. Aeron. Yeah, uh, K Trim 750. <laughs> oh, I need to. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, the original. Uh, well, the continuation of the Ford GT Mark II. Yeah, so, cars like those. Okay. All right. So, so, yeah, no, so I'm not gonna call it DBX like top ten, but it's in the top twenty for sure. Jesus. All time. Yeah, best, like most impressive vehicles I've ever driven. Wow. That's wow. Yeah, yeah. No, that, I mean, honestly, that's not what I expected. Like, I know that I the mean, reviews well, well, came out. It's not perfect because the, I mean, like the, the chassis and engine are so well sorted because a lot of Mercedes Benz funding going into that. Mm -hmm. But then when you get to the interior, you're using uh, Mercedes Benz and Potemkin that's like ten years old, uh, and then you know, and, and and yeah, it's just it's not really easy to use. And so, to, as far as a vehicle to live with every day, I don't recommend it on that level. If if you want something that you're happy with every day, get a Bentega. 
um, <laughs> which, which to its own right isn't you know class you know isn't like a leading thing you know but it, the infotainment got better this year mm-hmm. but you know it's not as intuitive as like a mainstream vehicle like a hyundai santa fe or something like that <laughs> right, but, right, right. But, you know, but yeah um but yeah uh dbx is definitely uh mm-hmm. as far as like a, a, a sports car that's disguised as an suv that thing feels like a like a like a sports car and you, you just it hides its weight so well so yeah, yeah well really it'll be really interesting because you know we get the ferrari suv quote unquote next year and i see the alphas the stelvios the qvs running around all the time around here you know and it's it's yeah, like uh, new Stelvio, world yeah Stelvio, i i was hustling through angeles crest uh around july of last year and i had driven it before but i, ha- I hadn't spent a week with it so it was my first week long loan with one. And yeah, I was, it was, I had a great time in that thing, but the DB, I mean, I was, I was giggling, but I wasn't screaming like I did with the DBX. Yeah. The Stelvio is great, but mm-hmm. just, it, it doesn't, you know, it, it's, I don't, I wouldn't call it like a top 20 vehicle. Okay. Noted. The one I'm seeing more of recently, and it maybe it's because my, my buddy's their new brand manager at the dealership and he's kicking ass is the uh, Maserati Levante's. Is it Maserati Levante? Levante, yeah, that's yeah. that's that. I would say the Levante, that dynamically is really impressive too. That comes close to DBX. Okay, Levante, a really really impressive handler. Everywhere else, yeah, you know, not really, you know, like infotainment, like the stuff every day, like the consumer <laughs> stuff, not really getting there. But dynamically, I am, I I am moved by the way that they engineered that thing. Yeah. I have not been in one yet. I drove one back at Monterey Car Week in, oof, uh, I mean, right right when it first came out, you know, it was just V6 only back then. Um, but that it was so impressive. When so impressive. And f- I got to ride, Joel Fetter had one during like the 2019 LA Auto Show or something like that. And I rode in that one. And yeah, the extra Ferrari V8 power was definitely moved it. A, you know a, a couple notches forward i just I w- i'd like to see how it would handle yeah when they announced that everybody was like it was like oh <laughs> okay now we're paying attention um it's definitely okay more, so definitely extra cavalinos on the front of engines two pickups i want to hit on real quick the baby duramax silverado and the new well, I mean, it's not a new frontier. It's a frontier with a new engine and transmission. Right. So, um, so how did you, did you You've driven other V8 powered Silverados before, right? Like the 5.3 yeah. or the 6.2? I've driven older 5.3, uh, plenty of older 5.3s, and I've driven Same five, the, uh, <laughs> the, the uh, I've driven two versions of the 6.2 with the 420 horsepower engine of the previous generation. That's a fantastic I engine. The four, I haven't driven the current V8 6.2 uh, Silverado. Okay. Yeah. But, but so, I mean, it's a very, very similar feel. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, the, the, that red line I was talking about earlier that had the, the 420 horsepower V8. It's a great so, yeah, engine. A terrific engine, yeah, and, and burnouts forever. <laughs> um, but uh, and, and not in a press truck. That was in my uh, my childhood best friend. He wanted me to drive it on his 30th birthday when he bought that six years ago. And oh, that's really like, funny. Yeah, we went up to Baldy in the tunnels, and he's like, "I'm gonna film it. Just give give me your best burnout." And we did one <laughs> good. I laid tracks down. So if you want it, you can go back in my Instagram and see that <laughs> from 26 years back in 2015, I guess. Yeah. Um, what are we looking yeah, at that, here? What's this rear uh, seat? So, I've no, oh my God. I've never, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Okay. So, we're, a, so now yeah, we're talking that, about the, the new, the current Silverado with the baby Duramax, but right. there's a door in the back seats. That's right. So if you want to stash whatever you want to stash, I don't judge. Um, <laughs> mm. Like the party, that's, you know, that, that's cool. Um, but yeah, you it's, you know, you can some, some really uh, a significant amount of contraband <laughs> in these, these, these doors that are built in to the rear seats of the Silverado crew cab. And uh, yeah, it's really convenient and innovative and good on GM for, for something that cool. I think that's really cool storage um, for whatever knickknacks. It's so, a very unconventional space for storing stuff, but man, it's, it's nifty. Does it just get to the area behind the seat then? 
uh, there, it, it actually, it's, it's storage within the seat back itself. So it doesn't go all the way back to, oh. it's contained within the seat, all the way back to the, the rear panel. That's yeah. so interesting. Yeah. And yeah, now we're, uh, yeah, the, you just swiped over to the 300. So how was the Durham? I mean, the, I mean, that, that's weird. I've never seen that. And I'm intrigued, but also concerned about how the difference in padding wears and, you know, what gets between everything, but how was the Duramax? That's, that's my, I, I wouldn't worry about the, the padding or anything, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it, no, it, yeah. Uh, as far as functionality, it, it doesn't affect it, but yeah. Um, with the Duramax itself is uh it's it's a riot off the line that the you know I'm looking at my yeah 460 foot pounds but yeah thank you for having that up because I couldn't remember yeah, 200 <laughs> foot, uh, 460 pounds for the car and from zero to 15 miles an hour that thing jumps it is so fun to make that truck jump off the line at the stoplights you 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 it doesn't feel like the it, it's like leaning back on its rear suspension it feels like the whole truck is lifting up and you know for like the first two seconds of the acceleration and then after that it's like eh, this feels like a lower power v6 um especially on the freeway it if you want to go like 65 to 75 miles an hour for passing on the freeway it'll get you there it'll get the job done but it's not gonna downshift if you were in the the the, the 6.2 oh my god you'd be yeah, it'd be it'd kick down it yep. make all this beautiful, glorious V8 noise and just rocket you forward, all you know, all manner of fast ahead of the the the, the competing traffic. Mm -hmm. With a Duramax, yeah, it's just kind of like, okay, cool, I'm passing cars in a reasonable amount of time. It, it's yeah, it's not bad, um, but not thrilling like the the, the 6.2 is. Yeah, but okay, so yeah, it does its job. Still a really impressive engine though. Um, has a really nice note to it. Um, you know, good exhaust noise, just a very refined sounding engine. Mind you, you know, this, this engine was originally created for Cadillac in the Escalade. And so the level of refinement as a result of that, the power delivery is really smooth, mm -hmm. um, makes a good noise. It, you know, it sounds like a, like, you know, like a, like a, a little bit like a BMW straight six. But it's um, a low yeah. NVH engine and that's like a high priority. Right. I mean, I, I, that's not my observation, but it's an observation I agree with. I, I was reading uh, my my friend Ed Kim's analysis, who's a uh, the v VP of um, of Auto industry Pacific? analysis at Auto Pacific. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I and um, and yeah, he he first uh, said that this kind of sounds like a like a like a like an E sixty five series straight six and kind of like that era of five series straight six. Huh. And I have to agree with it. I it's just it, it does offer that level of refinement. It's um, it's um, you know, obviously it's a workhorse. It's a diesel engine. It can do all that stuff. But it's it's great for every day. The only disappointment with that truck was that after I don't know if this is in my Instagram post. I'd have to look at the review. But I if if memory serves me right, I only ended up averaging about twenty two point something miles per gallon over my week and you know three hundred twenty one point five. Yeah, that's not too good. Yeah, yeah, it was 310 miles, 21.5 miles per gallon, and that was mixed driving. Um, there was there was plenty of freeway driving in that, but um, now, mind you, I did go up to film um, uh, a portion of Seduced by Speed in that truck, and when you're on those desolate roads leading up to Willow Springs, you are tempted to go higher speeds at full throttle for extended periods of time. <laughs> Allegedly. Oh. <coughs> Allegedly. Alleged, I mean, but um, no numbers but, were but, said. But but yeah, but when you're, I mean, Willow Springs is. I'm, I'm in El Segundo, right below LAX. Willow Springs is like 95 miles from me, so that's a lot of highway driving Good just Lord. in that trip alone. Yeah, and so I I would have hoped for closer to the the 30s that are quoted for the EPA estimates with that truck. Right, right. It wasn't because a few years earlier, me and my buddy Jonathan Klein were were just hammering this this tradesman eco diesel 1500. And we were struggling to get below 30. And we're, mind you, you know, most of our travel was on the freeways in that thing, but we were struggling to get below 30 miles per gallon in that thing. So the fact that it was, a, it was work to get beyond 22 in this Silverado is a bit of a disappointment. But uh, I've seen other people, other, other, um, other reviewers get higher. So I, I, I have to you know, say, you know, ultimately your mileage may vary. Um, but yeah, you know. That's so what about the what about the Frontier? How's the new Frontier engine? Okay, Frontier was one of my favorite vehicles I tested in 2020. Um, 
I, I hadn't driven a, a Frontier before that. Um, but with the new engine, the 3.8 liter V6 with 310 horsepower, I believe it, yeah, 310, now that I can see my Instagram. <laughs> 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 I have to wait Cheat a second. Cheat. Uh, no, but, and the reason why I'm delaying when he puts these things up is because I have to uh, look through the uh, press escape to, to exit full screen mode. So I'm trying to like straining to read what you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> screen is like obscuring at 80% so I can barely see the numbers until mm -hmm. I, anyhow, give you a little bit of the background uh, behind the scenes here. Now I can read it. So yeah, 310 horsepower V6 from the upcoming next generation Frontier. But they put that powertrain and that nine speed transmission into the last year of the um, uh, of the previous generation, so the 2020 model year vehicle, and, it, and you know it, it makes the, the truck feel a lot more modern. Um, and when you put that modern powertrain underneath such an old truck, it starts to bring out the, the old car charm a lot more. And so it's like a throwback. It's like it's like a resto mod kind of, where yeah. you have all this modernity underneath you to get you going and all that stuff. But you're in this old 2006 or whatever it is on the interior. It hasn't changed for 15 plus 05. years. Been. It was an 05 model. 05, year truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing's changed except for the, the infotainment. Now it's like a, a seven inch touchscreen. Woo. Okay. You know, but it still doesn't <laughs> offer Apple Car. <laughs> right. Right. Didn't, so, they, didn't they put a red start button in too? Like somewhere yeah, totally yeah. arbitrary? Like Isn't it? Is that it? Other is, side. Other side. So yeah, so so you have that red start button there. That's the par for the court, you know, Nissan parts bin stuff. But if you look at the original location of where the ignition cylinder was, it's just blank plastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and it's not the only vehicle out right now that does it. There's a couple of others that do that mm. too. But um, but yeah, the the front, the, the old frontier at least is one of them. Um, but yeah, I I took that out to Rower in one of the more technical sections and it handled that like a champ. If you look at some of the off-road, like the, 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 the steeper trails that I went on in this Instagram post here. Yeah. There's um, some flex in that picture. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, you know, that, that grade is a lot steeper than, you know, pictures don't do steep grades justice, but Ever. that was a pretty, yes. that, that's a, that's an intimidating grade. Um, yeah. We, we, we got a bit pretty like a few years earlier, me and my buddy, Sam, we got a bit uh, pretty well in the Colorado ZR2. Because that's you know a lot more lifted than the Frontier uh, Pro 4X is, but the Frontier did just fine. It was, uh, you know, it, it felt well suited and Billy goaded for it. So I, I was I was pretty impressed by that. Still a good looking truck. It's a like, I, I think it's a fantastic looking truck. I really like the, the I think the interior is good looking too. Yeah, it's old and really plasticky, but it's functional. It's useful. It's to the point. It um. Does it have the like Nissan space seats, whatever they, they, they have some fun name for it. The, the, the NASA inspired seating. It, it, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think, cause yeah, those, it's still operating off of, you know, an older design. So it's before they, they started touting that, mm -hmm. but it, it's, it's still really comfortable, but yeah. Um, having, you know, with you saying that, yeah, Nissan does have some of the most comfortable seats in the game, do. but for me, I like it when there's a lot of support in the upper back to take, the pressure off my lower back and my upper thighs and gluteal area. Um, and a lot of Nissan seats do that really well. So yep. they, they just contour to the back nicely and hold, you know, they, they, they hold some of your body weight on your back too, which is, it feels incredible. Um, yeah. These seats didn't do that, but they were still plenty comfortable. Yeah, it's a cool truck. I'm into it. I, I think the proportions are right. Yeah, and it's, it's like real four by four. Do my, my favorite I, fact. Uh, I mean, is nothing below the frame rails. Yep. Absolutely. Tacoma's yeah, got yeah. skid plates. Forerunners have skid plates. There's nothing below the frame rails. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just raw. <laughs> yeah, go go beat it up. Yeah, no, it they're, up. they're cool trucks. Yeah, Maybe I mean, uh, Colorado ZR2 would be my pick for an off-road truck in the midsize segment right now, but but yeah, the Nissan is so... That's charming. a different price. So charming. Then you're talking 45. Yeah, I think I'd take over yeah yeah it's 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 a, it's a good value proposition and i personally would take it over at tacoma it's just more charming to me yeah after spending quite a lot of time in a tacoma at the i guess like tail end of march and early april my best friend it lives in colorado i went out to visit him for the first time since he moved there like two days before you know national lockdown and he has a lifted tacoma and you know, he, he uses it and it's a truck for him. You know, he likes cars, but he's not really an yeah. enthusiast, but we, I must've spent 
12 or 14 hours in that truck over like three or four days and the god the seating position is fucking terrible yeah that's that's his truck it's a nice truck you know it's got like the right stuff on it it's got like skids and sliders you know bill stein 5100s up front and like the right add a leaf kit in the back but all of the good off-road equipment can't unfuck that the seating position and seats are terrible and especially at you know at like 8,000 feet, the, uh, the engine and, and transmission and that thing, the three, five and, and that six speed are just, they're just awful. So, yeah, yeah. I, that's, that's, that's my big issue with the Tacoma and it's something that the new front, you know, the, the, the new powertrain 2020 frontier address because Tacoma operating only with a five speed automatic. And so when you're going up a reasonable grade on a highway, uh, 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 and this is so annoying um yeah the, the the nine speed frontier doesn't have that problem it might downshift once and then just hold it there for the ideal gear it, it's 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 just so much smarter uh, you know when, it, yeah. when it's a great even the old four liter was a strong engine too that they the one they got rid of that that was that was still a good engine but yeah unfortunately tied to an older transmission but yeah i think i think you know above all the nine speed transmission um is is yeah that that's it's probably the most important addition to that truck do you guys mind if i take a break i drink a lot of water and i just need to go to no the you're good we're actually i don't know if you want to go or not or come back but we're actually we should wrap things up soon ross is I on mean, the east I'm coast on, so I'm on on the people on the on the on, on watching this on youtube have been seeing me just your bladder's going <laughs> right now no i'm uh, actually yeah i I'm, it's just about you know it's so time for uh for, we could we can wrap this up because Ross has to go to yeah, bed. I do. Uh, I'm shot. <laughs> so, uh, what do you want to plug? If you want to follow me on the socials, uh, the easiest way to do that is because I'm most I, I'm not really active on Twitter, even though I'm MC3 Films on Twitter for you know. But yeah, I'm not active on it. So yeah, the best way to get a hold of me and reach out anytime. I'm I'm. You want to say hello, or you want to extol the virtues of the 19 something something this or that or whatever. I don't care reach out i'm here to listen the 2020 uh, aston martin dbx <laughs> there we go yeah. uh reach out to me mc3 films on instagram Sweet. and you you have some you got you have a show right oh that's right yeah yeah i did mention it a little bit earlier <laughs> but yes please check out my show on motor trend it's called seduced by speed and we talk about the biggest misses and scandals in the pantheon of automotive history so we uh our, our first season was six episodes strong and fingers crossed still for a second season order i'm hearing that it did well on the app and it seems like it's also doing well on the cable channel too the motor trend cable channel i know mm -hmm. that's channel 281 if you have direct tv because i used to have direct tv back in the day uh, i don't know if, if you have uverse or if you have uh, spectrum i don't know what channels those are but yeah it's uh you know check check with your cable provider for mm -hmm. the motor trend channel on cable but yeah, um, we are, they, they're now replaying us because they premiered us on the channel back in, uh, from starting in February and, or, or January to February or something. So now we're in reruns and now they're doing like a four, four hour blocks in the oh. rerun. Yeah. And now it's affecting my voice now. I'm like, you can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just start coming out your mouth. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's so, like, I'm yellow right now. Um, I'll, I'll wrap everything up. You go take care of that. <laughs> yes. And I <laughs> thank you guys so much for having me on. I appreciate you guys for having me on because I, I really haven't been on many podcasts to promote mm -hmm. Seduce by Speed, unfortunately. So I really appreciate <laughs> you guys um yeah helping out and getting the word out this show. You're welcome back anytime, dude. Thank You're you good. so much. Thanks for joining You're us. Good. Man. Go do it. All I'm right. Gonna I feel like I'm gonna walk cross legged to the bathroom right That's now. That's fine. You do that. At least you're on still camera. Walk. All right, I'm going to finish up. So you can rate and review the, review the show on iTunes. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. Brad's still listening, hopefully. Uh, you can follow Manuel uh, uh, at, at MC3 Film. See, Brad's oh, going to hey. send that for the video. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can read, read what we write on Hooniverse. Uh, maybe, I might be writing stuff somewhere else, potentially. You fucking should. I'm trying. I, somebody awesome. said that. Somebody said they were going to send me something. He may have been mentioned on the show tonight at some point, and he hasn't sent me anything yet. So we'll see. I did make him laugh in an email. And so I think that counts as possibly a yes. Um, you can follow Ross at no, not like the one from friends on Instagram. I'm at overlanding dad. 
I forget what Brad's Instagram is now because it changes. I deleted mine. Oh, that's see, that's what would be a great Instagram handle. <laughs> but <laughs> it used to be hi Brad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh Radwood Official, um Autopia 2099 and uh flat sixes. <laughs> flat sixes. Those are those are yeah. I like the Autopia 2099. Medical advice that I have for your listeners, um, totally unauthorized, but every now and then it is good to hold your urine until the brink of explosion because it trains your brain and okay. your bladder. To so I, I have questions right now, dude. Like the way you were reacting, I thought you'd have been peeing for at least like five minutes. Like that was days? only like 30 seconds. Like, yeah. What, <laughs> what just was happened? it 2020 when you peed last or was it? <laughs> <laughs> I feel uh, like so, I haven't seen him for six months. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's where we're ending the show. When Ross yeah. says like, <laughs> that is really not where I expected to end up tonight, but okay. No.